<clears throat> the word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit of the joints and the marrow, and is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show yourselves approved unto God, a workman that does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. All right, we're in 1 Peter chapter 1, and we will resume with verse 10. <clears throat> 1 Peter 1, 10. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So simple acknowledgement before God of personal sin restores you to fellowship every time, no matter what. But you have to make the application. It's simply a self-discipline that you and I need to maintain throughout the day and certainly at this point in our day when we come together to receive spiritual encouragement, uh, refreshment, which we most definitely need uh, in these very perilous times. Let us pray. Well, Heavenly Father, we know that there is a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. We have not chosen that path, We've chosen the path of truth so that we can be adjusted to your plan and glorify you and receive those things that you have promised to those who take you seriously. Bless this Bible class to that end in Christ's name. Amen. All right. In these verses, we have, I entitled them, The Prophetic Inquiry and the Present Dispensation, verses 10 and 12. Their diligence. As to this salvation, <clears throat> as to this salvation, we have uh, uh, concerning, uh, that's the word as, peri, concerning or as to this salvation. All right, we have the relative pronoun, hos, uh, this, and salvation is soteria. The prophets. Prophetes in the plural. The prophets who prophesied. <clears throat> the ones prophesying. Arist acti participle, nominative masculine plural, profetuo. To prophesy of the grace that would come to you. Of the grace concerning pari, the grace with a definite article, chorus, coming, uh, that would come to you in italics, but that to make good English. This is what they did. They made careful search and inquiry. They made careful search only here. Ex, arrow, nao, arist indicative. Make careful search uh, and uh, inquiry. Uh, made search is the word seek out. I gave it the aorist indicative ek zeteo, to seek out. So the two reforcing themselves with regard to the approach that prophets of Old Testament times made with regard to the matter to be specified. What? Seeking to know. Seeking to know is present active participle, ero nao, which means to investigate or search, found eight times. Searching to know, seeking to know, what person or time, <clears throat> the pronoun what, uh, or what kind of, poios, interrogative, time, Kairos, translation, what or what kind of time? The prophets knew who the person was, but they grappled with the question of the age between the two advents, in a nutshell. 
the Spirit of Christ within them was indicating. Again, reference to the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of Christ <clears throat> within them, locative of the pronoun, was indicating. Imperfect, imperfect, that's linear action in past time. Imperfect, active, indicative, de lao. Make clear, indicate, hear it in 2 Peter 1.14. As he, he is the antecedent is the Holy Spirit, predicted the sufferings of Christ. He predicted, foretold, pro marotuomai, means to foretell or predict the sufferings, <coughs> pathema in the plural, sufferings of Christ, and see these are two, these are two. Opposite situations. He predicted the sufferings of Christ and the glories to follow. And the glories, that's the accusing plural of the word glory. <clears throat> and the glories, literally, we have a preposition after, and then the pronoun, accusing neuter plural, after these things. They've translated and to follow. Okay, what they figure out? Well, one of the things they figured out, <clears throat> excuse me, in verse 12, it was revealed to them. Apocalypto. It was revealed, it was revealed that they were not serving themselves, but you. Okay? That they were not serving Diakoneo, themselves, reflexive pronoun, adversity pronoun, but you, in the plural, church age believers. In these things, in these things which have now been announced to you. Uh, the word here, uh, which now, present time, aorist passive indicative, on, on gelo, to announce to you through those who preached the gospel to you through the ones proclaiming the gospel proclaim good news euangelizo eris participle having proclaimed the gospel the good news to you by the spirit sent from heaven instrumental pneuma of course by the holy spirit <clears throat> sent Day of Pentecost, Eris Passi Participle, Apostello, to send from, preposition ek, from Uranus, heaven. And then we have kind of a footnote, things into which angels long to look. <clears throat> into which angelos, <laughs> angels, long to lust, long to look. The word epithumeo means to desire, lust, or long for something. Anyway, in the context, uh, they longed uh, to look. The word look is an aorist infinitive of paracupto. Paracupto means to look or peer, P-E-E-R, into something. Uh, a careful observation for instance, an example of this word is in John and Luke, where the first to come to the tomb was, and that particularly was seen with regard to John and others, they, they made careful observation of the physical situation in the empty tomb. And in John, and James 1.25, uh, it is used of the kind of interest that the believer is to exhibit with regard to Bible doctrine. Not just some casual, no. It's like imagining something that you are very interested in and very curious about. It's got your attention and you are looking at it very seriously and analyzing what you are observing. So it is in James 25, 
uh, but one who looks intently at the perfect law, this is not the Mosaic law, the law of liberty, and abides by it. That's your application, lives under it. It's two things. Not having become a forgetful hearer in one year and out the other, as we used to say. You got it by the time you got to the door. But you're, you're thinking about it. You're, you're reflecting on it after the fact so that it will govern your thinking and your actions. Having, not having become a forgetful here, but an effectual doer. This man, this person, will be blessed in what he does. There's the key right there. So, anyway. Analysis. As to, or, or concerning preposition, this salvation stands as a kind of heading to the long sentence ending with verse 11. The repetition of the noun salvation from verse 9 acts as a bridge to the discussion of Old Testament prophetic insight with respect to the present dispensation of grace. Salvation refers to all phases of Christian experience. The emphasis in verse five, 9 above is the final outcome based on the Bema seat. There's another hurdle we have to overcome, and that is to not be denied uh, the high reward associated with the upward call. The prophets who prophesied is a reference to Old Testament prophets and not to New Testament prophets. Five, they are clearly distinguished from those who first brought the gospel to the Asian Christians in verse 12. Those who preached the gospel to you. And of course, with the follow-up, so that these people were prepared, so that when they got this letter from Peter, they knew what was going on. <clears throat> of the many objects of their, of their prophetic witness, it included the grace that would come to a di distinct category of believers living between the first and second advents, or more specifically, between the first advent and the day of the Lord. This grace, as it has turned out, concerns itself with the special status of believers of this dispensation. Of the grace is literally concerning the grace. Nine, Peter uses two compound verbs, similar in meaning, ek zeteo, seek out, and ex uh, <clears throat> to make careful inquiry into a subject to show that this was not a casual pursuit. This was something that the prophets individually worked on as they began to contemplate things. They were not happy just to throw this aside and treat it lightly. The focus of their inquiry, though not stated, was the written text of the Old Testament. That's all they had to go on. What did the writing prophets have to say? So as time elapsed, other prophets added their, their prophet, their information, and, they, and it all started with Moses, because he had something to say about this. So they would naturally go with what he had to say about it and other prophets that added to this specific discussion. They sought out an answer to their doctrinal dilemma, and they did so with the utmost diligence. That's how the word of God should be respected and dealt with, not just some casual uh, or uh, here and there stuff. And, that, and, and now we have the completed can of scripture, and it behooves the student of the word of God to study these things out and not leave some things just sitting over there. 
And I've seen this over and over again, even by in the ICE ministry. There were things that were not addressed and they're not obscure. They're right out in the open. There's no excuse for it. Men, if the pastor teacher and those who are studying the word of God are doing their job, they're in prayer because they have the promise that a man lacks wisdom, you get it to them. And all, it won't all come at once. You can see that these put this together. Certain of these prophets were very curious about the people who would be the chosen people, if you will, between the two admins. Now, there's a certain limitations they inevitably had. And that is the nature of this dispensation. The specifics. That fact that you know there is going to be one, then that, that's one thing. But as far as knowing the nitty gritty, they didn't. It was hidden. It was a mystery. But they knew that there would be another people of God making an appearance. And they didn't carry it too far with the idea that Israel was forever set aside. That's the dummies, some of them that are out there. These covenants God, God made with the patriarchs, the founders, were unconditional. He didn't say, if you behave yourselves, I'll do this for you. It's like salvation. It's unconditional. All you got to do is believe. And so it was unconditional. The Mosaic Covenant, however, was conditional. Do this and you'll be all right. Don't do this and this is what I'm going to do to you. The cursing and the blessing there in when Moses, when Moses uh, presented the law in Deuteronomy. This is, the, this is the blessing and this is the curse. This will come up on you if you do what I tell you to, God tells you to. If you don't, then this is, this is what you're going to run through. And more often than not, seemingly, they went the wrong way. But that, that had no impact on the Abrahamic covenant, the land grant, and all the rest of it. So all these people out here today can run their stupid mouths about how bad the Jews are, and on and on and on and on and on. I don't even go there. Of course they've been bad. We got the Old Testament to prove that. They got kicked out of the land three times for their sins, corporately. But there's always those that stand out and do it right. And then the end game. When there's a mass of them, turn to the Lord and step into that millennium and they're not going to do any, pull any of these stunts anymore. And that's the whole story. I'm getting ahead of myself. That's the whole story by telling this prophet to go marry a prostitute. Hosea. Would you like to be a prophet? They had to do some unusual stuff. You're going to marry a prostitute. You're going to have some children by her. Then she's going to run off and go back to her old ways. And then I'm going to tell you what else you're going to do. One of these days, you're going to find her in a dire straits as a slave being sold on an auction block, like a, like, like a, like a piece of livestock. And you're going to purchase her. And you're going to take her back. And you're going to live happily ever after. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I love the Bible. I love those things. See, that, that, that's the, all that to play act, God taking Israel back in the end and receiving his first wife, Israel, who has proven herself at times and now currently. The worst of the worst was her repudiation of Jesus Christ to this day under Judaism. That's the worst. Now, you have to separate that from the fact that they're back in the land for biblical reasons. It's right there in the prophets. I'm going to scatter you to the four winds, and I'm going to bring you back when I'm ready. And that's the whole, that's, a, that's the bigger part of our current dispensation, that she has been scattered among all the nations. But she retains her genetic identity. 
She doesn't get absorbed and amalgamated into a, what we call this country, a melting pot. <clears throat> there's, some, there's some people out there, out there I've run across them. They're conservatives about certain things, but they're running their mouths about Israel and they don't know squat. They haven't been taught in a local church. Some of them are politicians, some of them are this. Of course, most of them that are conservative, they're not on top of Bible doctrine, so they don't know the times in which we live. So they're out here trying to save America. Well, we might get a shot in the arm and get a little better situation. I don't know. I don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. Whatever it does, Christ is in control, and he's moving this whole thing forward. So don't get your hopes up on something. And then have them sh shattered. Your focus needs to be on God and his plan. And that's the prophetic part of it. That's our diligence. That's our due diligence. With regard to the word of God and the prophetic word. I'm still working on some things, some details. And I've come along and grown and figured things out. I figured out the big picture, you know. But then I get more, more of the details in place. Okay. All right, let's move on here. Uh, uh, 12, okay, we give you that. Uh, which is translated seeking to know is used in John 5, 39, 7, 22 of inquiry into scripture. Uh, the verb uh, made careful inquiries, verse 10. All right, 13, one wonders, one wonders, that'd be me, if this research was done independently or was an ongoing compilation of research done during the period of the formation of the Old Testament canon. And in the school of the prophets and everything, they're talking about this. In any case, certainly the more Old Testament books at one's disposal, the better chance of coming to a more complete resolution of the question. That's the difference. People don't, they don't care. They're not excited about it. Well, that's their problem. And I'm talking Christians. It's not something that they have a keen interest in. But I do. And I put together these things. I never heard in the ICE ministry one time. Did you? If you did, tell me. I never heard one time. I heard that they were dispersed, but I never heard one time that they were going to be returned when they were still in a state of unbelief. And the process would begin then. It's, it's clear. It's the value of the vision of the, uh, 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 of the, of the scattered bones and, then the, the, and all the rest of that so we've gone across. And the thing is, I'm not returning you. I'm not getting this ball rolling because of any righteousness in you. I'm not, oh, whoa, Jew, it's a Jew. Oh, they're Jews. They've got to, ha they got to have it right in their souls. But I'm doing it because I'm sick and tired of people running their mouths and making, making statements about the promised land, the holy land, and all the rest. And they're out there, and they're still doing it big time. They're going to continue to do it. <clears throat> but they're going to eat their words. They're going to see. We call them anti-Semites, and they are, and some of them are conservatives. And I start reading their stuff. They may have other good things they're saying about things. I just turn them off. You're an idiot. You're disgusting. <clears throat> this activity began most certainly sometime in the post-Mosaic period. When it began in earnest, we would have to speculate. 17. Now, to verse 11, and the specific target of the prophetic inquiry. The subject seeking to know. Is certain unspecified Old Testament prophetic students and the object of the participle here to find out, examine, is the phrase translated, what person or time. 
The first part of this phrase consists of a preposition and an indefinite pronoun in the accusative. The problem with the New American Standard translation is that what person is unlikely because scripture gives no indication of any mystery or doubt about the person in whom salvation is centered. No, they knew he would be in the line of Christ. I mean, they knew he would be in the line of David, they, the, that, that line of, of the, down the road. They knew that. They even, they even could ascertain uh, from Daniel's 70th week of prophecies the timing factor because there was a believer that knew it, an elderly prophet that was alive when Christ was brought as a, into, the, into the temple for the ritual of circumcision. Or, no, it wasn't that, it was somehow. But he's, he's, a, he's a baby, and he holds him in his arm, and I told you that. One, one Simeon. He knew the timing, because he had prayed that he wouldn't die as an old man before he saw with his own eyes the salvation of the Lord. And he held the Savior in his hand, an infant. And he got, it, he, he got his phase two blessing out of that. Anyway, <clears throat> So Old Testament prophets from Abraham forward knew that the Savior would be a Jew, an Israelite, who would be rejected by his own people. That's in there. It's not obscure in any way or form. Everything adds up to it. Isn't it amazing? This, 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 is, this is the <clears throat> proverbial elephant in the middle of the room, and I'll run around it. They didn't want to swallow that. But, but if they had of, then he wouldn't have been rejected by them. So it was just prophetic information that he would come to his own and his own would receive him not, corporately. With all the evidence, biblical and the other stuff that was all right in their face. It's negative volition never seeks to amaze. It's ability to reject the blatantly obvious because they have a hidden agenda. Jesus fought him tooth and nail during his public ministry. Uh, as the Old Testament canon, point 22, evolved, there came to be a body of divine revelation that indicated various particulars with respect to the person and times associated with Christ's advents. 23, for instance, the place and unique circumstances of his birth were part of a prophetic witness. The place of his birth. That he would be born of a virgin. She was under the divine institution of marriage because she was betrothed and married to one Joseph. <clears throat> and after that, they went on to have a normal marital life. But that was a sacrifice, if you want to call it that, that they made. They both had to make application. He had to keep her under wraps and in hiding because people wagging their tongues because they're stupid. They just, they, they just want to pop off on things and say that, you know, she got pregnant out of wedlock. The second part of this phrase is translated or time. It consists of, of the coordinating dis, disjunctive conjunction or followed by the interrogative pronoun pois, put sort of, with the noun time, kairos. 26. This part of the phrase goes with the preposition ice, with both pronouns and the, and the noun taking the accusative of reference. The translation, what or what kind of time best suits the known facts of doctrine, specifically that they knew uh, what they knew and what they could not have possibly known. 28, Old Testament prophets understood from the study of the Old Testament, the doctrines of the birth, life, death, burial, resurrection, ascension, session, and the coming of Messiah and the establishment of a kingdom on earth. They knew that. They had that, they had that all figured out. They even understood that God would set aside, and this is a big point, God would set aside the te temporarily his ancient people Israel in favor of another people following the first advent. They knew that. 
They knew that Israel would be temporarily set aside. Unlike the false theology that has existed in certain churches in the church age, permanent replacement. No, it's temporary replacement. So those that go for permanent replacement say, the land over there, no, that means anything. They spiritualize all of this stuff and says it all comes to the church. This is not true. But you'd, you'd expect that in the church age, all these weird and wrong ideas would come into play. Israel is set aside temporarily until. Now, in this dispensation, individual Jews jump on board. They're church age believers. They'll be blessed under the church age uh, principles. But the ones that go into the trib and beyond, they're the ones that are going to uh, turn things around when God removes blindness from Jacob. Because there'll be a generation that's ready for it. There'll be a generation that's not like their fathers, their ancestors. They'll be ready for it. And they will jump on board as I was talking to someone today. <clears throat> as I've said, you know, God's bringing the Jews back. He's been doing this all early in the, or early in the last century, all the way up to the present time. And I saw a picture of a bunch of them getting off a plane coming out of Ukraine. He's shaking them up out here in the nations with this anti-Semitism and pressure put on them to get back to their ancestral home. And then we'll deal with the rest of it. He's going to call them out of the land of the north. You go straight up from Jerusalem. And you know what you will, you will touch? The two biggest cities in Russia, Moscow and St. Petersburg. You can go look at a map and look at it. Straight north. And that's where, the, that's where the most of the Jews that live in Russia, they live in those two cities. I, was, I read that. Just today, I think. I didn't see anybody making any reference to coming out of the land of Babylon. That's where the, isn't it? Uh, some, that's where by far the, over, the numerically overwhelming number of Jews live in the United States of America. You just go out and say, uh, demographically, where are the Jews today? And how many live here, 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 here? There, there's, I, I have one of the, on that all Israel news, because it's put out by Christians, I prefer it to that than the other one. But anyway, uh, that one of the articles I kept dealt with the whole history of this migration and all the wars Israel has had all the way through here. So it's very interesting. There are no accidents. The attacks that came up against them. Under, they should have been wiped out, but they weren't. They weren't. When they declared nation, they got attacked. Again and again. And you look at the different ones and, and, and this most recent uh, goings on. Look, it looks real bad. Yet they're, they're, they're rolling along as a nation. God is in control. Yes, rockets are being shot into their little country. How'd you like that? Up on the north and down there at the south. And of course, on the West Bank and all that. They're not going to succeed. And yeah, Israel's going to go through a lot of suffering. But if God wants to be a certain way, it's going to be that way. And before this is all over, they're going to look as though they are going to be wiped out. And two major battles in the tribulation, the Gog and Magog invasion. Russia, Iran, Turkey, they're very anti-Semitic, the leaders of Turkey. I think Libya, that's kind of strange, or what Africa there. They're all going to come down, they're all going to gang up on Israel, and they're going to be wiped out with fire out of heaven. That's the first Gog and Magog. Gog and Magog one, Gog and Magog two to be distinguished from the one at the end of the millennium. And then, of course, the second advent. 
when the Lord himself is going to be actively stirring these people up to do the thing that, that, that any sane person shouldn't even be involved in. I'm going to, I'm, it's like putting hooks in something. I'm going to drag them in there. I'm going to get them in there for this bloodbath. They've had, they've had seven years to figure it out. And they're still God haters and, and, and all the rest. They, they, they will get it. That's in Zechariah, the, uh, the second advent, of which you and I will be eyewitnesses. Anyway, uh, even though they understood that God would set aside temporarily his people, Israel, in favor of another people following the first advent, they got that far with it. And they were intellectually honest enough to say that's what's going to happen. It's not a popular doctrine to say we're going to be benched, to use a, uh, 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 an athletic term. You're going to be benched, and we're putting him in there until you can get your act together. <laughs> so, Moses, Isaiah, Hosea, all indicated that God would replace Israel with a new nation people. I've given you this over and over again, but that's where we're at, so we'll, we'll do it again. I'm on record of having said this. Now, normally, uh, of, the two, of the two restorations of Israel, the first one, they got their act together in Babylon. And they got to come home 70 years later. It was a big test considering the nature of things in the land that had languished for 70 years. So they came back in belief. And this one, they come back in belief, an unbelief, and then it turns into belief. Here's the verse. So you've got to catch all the verses. You can't just run over stuff. This is in Deuteronomy 32. Uh, and in... And, and, and I'm just picking this one verse out. God is here as the speaker. They have made me jealous with what is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their idols. So I'll make them jealous with those who are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. That's Gentiles. That's us Gentiles. That have been running amok in paganism. And so, that, so if you were a prophet and you read that without knowing what we know, you couldn't, you'd say, what people? You'd probably be looking around, maybe it's this nation, maybe it's that. Turns out it's none of the above. It's believers from every nation for the church age. But we know that. Isaiah 65, 1. I permitted myself to be sought by those who did not ask for me. I permitted myself to be found by those who did not seek me. I said, here am I, here am I, to a nation which did not call upon my name historically. And you would think, well, that's, that's, one, that's just one nation. No, we as church age believers constitute a new nation. Whatever nation a person as a Christian in this dispensation lives in, they're also a part of this chosen nation. Israel became a nation at Sinai, officially. We are incorporated into the body of Christ, and at one of the terms, we'll get it in Peter, a holy nation, a holy priesthood, a universal priesthood. Now, those are all particulars. No, you can't fault any of the Old Testament prophets for not getting this information, because God kept that secret from them. All right, Hosea 110. Oh, wrong chapter. Yet the number of the sons of Israel be like the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured. 
and in the place where it is said to them, you are not my people, it will be said, you are the sons of the living God. Well, that one I don't think applies here. Let me look at 2.23. Uh, I will sow her for myself in the land. I will have compassion on her who had not obtained compassion. And I will say to those who are not my people, you are my people. And they will say, you are my God. Okay, that one works. And then, of course, in the New Testament, where these are quoted in Romans 9, 25 and 26, 10, 19 and 20, which we have studied. All these things were made apparent to them through God, the Holy Spirit. Just like doctrine is made clear to us, anything you know and understand truly has come to you through the, the, the uh, hands-on teacher of doctrine to the spirit of positive volition, and that's God, the Holy Spirit. He's taught me, so I tell you, and he in turn commends it to your thinking, whatever it is. God, the Holy Spirit, made the Old Testament prophecies clear as well as whatever a direct revelation was given to a particular prophet. Now, I want to I want to say that some of the prophets they hit they hit a wall, and uh, Daniel is at the end of his book. He had questions, and he's he's elderly, and he's been faithful, and all this is revealed to him, and he's just told to go your way. You're not responsible for this. You, I'm add, adding this, but you, you'll, you, you're all right. You just go on your way. And you'll have a special place in the kingdom, a special piece of turf. <clears throat> uh, for instance, Daniel revealed the exact time when Christ would appear, first advent, as well as the subsequent fall of Jerusalem and the dispersion of national Israel, Daniel 9, and why they were going to be dispersed. Now, any Jew can read that, right? But it's hard-headed. It, they act like their fathers, their ancestors. No amount of evidence. We've seen it over and over again. I fought this battle through my ministry. No amount of evidence can convince some people if they are set in a certain way. Huh? It's not on me. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not responsible because I taught it. So God the Holy Spirit indwelt these men and he was the one who made prophetic inquiry possible. The Spirit of Christ refers to God the Holy Spirit. Compare, compare Romans 8, 9 for the only other specific reference to the Spirit of Christ, referring to the Holy Spirit. The phrase within them indicates that they were indwelt with the Holy Spirit as we are in this age. It was not universal, apparently, and uh, there is some discussion as to uh, the fact that Old Testament saints, and I don't understand it all, and I'll be honest with you. I mean, it seems to me like uh, once you're saved, one said you had to ask for the Holy Spirit. There's a, there's a deal in Christ's ministry where he said to ask, pray for the Spirit. Well, Maybe that is simply they were to start praying, kind of in a, not understanding everything, in reference to the day of Pentecost, with the with the with the with that advent of the Holy Spirit and the effect that and the changes that occurred with regard to believers. <clears throat> so God, the Holy Spirit, predicted specific prophetic facts relative to the first and second advents. Great detail. There's enough detail and information there that, that uh, they, they were clear on this. So the phrase, the sufferings of Messiah, characterized the first advent with special emphasis on the cross. The phrase, glories to follow, summarizes the history of God the Son beginning with his resurrection, because that's glorious. But then it goes all the way through in his, his resurrection, his ascension, his session, and beyond. All right, we'll stop here. Thank you, Father, for the time. May God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten us in Christ's name. Amen.